In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the arithmetic operators in JavaScript, or you could say the math operators that we kind of use for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. All right, so to get things going, I've already made a file called mathoperators.js. I've also already opened a terminal. And I want to just go to MDN really quickly. You can get to this page by Google searching MDN space arithmetic operators, and this should be the first result. So basically, this page is a great resource if you're trying to kind of remember the arithmetic operators or learn them in general. It goes through everything. So you have your addition operator, which we've already worked with. This is how you can find kind of the sum of some numbers in JavaScript or also do some string concatenation. Then you have your subtraction. You have your division. You have your multiplication. You have this remainder operator, which we'll talk about. And then we also have this exponentiation, which is kind of new for us in JavaScript. We used to have this math.pow that we would use, and I'll go through both of those. Also in this page, you're going to see this increment operator, this plus plus. We'll talk about this later on, and you're also going to see the decrement operator, the minus minus. We'll talk about that later on as well. So let's go ahead and get going with some examples. I'll keep this really simple. So we'll start with const, and I'll just do number one. And let's just use small numbers. So let's do two. And do const number two, and let's say this is three. And let's just do const number three. And let's say this is four. So we already know that we can add these together using our addition operator. So I can say const sum, and this will be equal to number one, and plus number two, and then plus number three. And if we console.log this sum, we already know we're going to get two plus three plus four. So that's pretty easy, right? Number one is two. Number two is three. Number three is four. So two plus three is five. Five plus four is nine. So let me go ahead and run this. I'm going to type node space math operators.js, and I get nine. Okay, so that's pretty simple. We also know about the type coercion. So if I make one of these into a string, let's say I start with the first one, what it's going to do is it's going to think that I want to do string concatenation. So it's going to take this string two and this number three, and when I say to add them, it's going to convert three into a string, and it's going to give me 23. Then I'm going to have the string 23, and then I'm going to add that to the number four. Again, it's going to think I want to do string concatenation, so it's going to convert four into a string. So if I run this right now, I will get 234 as a string. It's going to take two, slap on a three, slap on a four. So let's run that real quick, and you get 234 as a string. And that's pretty easy to identify. Now with subtraction, it's going to be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and change these numbers up. So I'm going to put a 4, a 3, and a 2 like this, just because I don't want to end up with a negative for the first one. So let me just do two numbers for once to keep this kind of simple. And I'm going to change this instead of sum. I'm just going to change this to result so we can keep working with it. You could also put difference if you want. It doesn't matter. So let's put clear, and let's run this, and we get 1. So what we have here is number one, which is four, minus number two, which is three, which is obviously one. So that's pretty easy to do as expected. But let's say that I change this one into a string. What do you think is going to happen? There is no string concatenation with the minus operator. So what's going to happen is JavaScript's going to say, hey, I know what you meant to do. You meant to do the number four minus the number three. So now we're going to see type coercion work differently. And so what it's going to do here is it's going to convert four into a number. And so if we run this, there will be absolutely no change. And in fact, you see the color is still yellow, which results in us having a number. You can even do type of result, and you'll see that it's still a number. So let's run that. You do get number. So let's erase this real quick. And this is true unless you put something in here that JavaScript can't kind of course into a number. So let's say I just wrote four like this. You're going to have the string four minus three. That's not going to be a number. So that's going to be NAN, not a number. So let's run this, and you get not a number. Okay, so if you get something like this, you need to just be aware of what the possible causes are. And it's in the case of subtraction, you put something in there that it couldn't convert into a number. All right, so that's pretty easy. You also need to know about kind of multiple operations. So let's say I did addition and subtraction together. So let's say I first did number one plus number two. And then over here, I did minus number three. Well, this guy is going to go left to right. We're going to talk about order of operations in the next lesson. I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but basically what's going to happen is number one is four and number two is three. So it's going to add those two together first. So four plus three is seven. 
Then it's going to move on to the next operation, which is minus number three. So it's minus two. Seven minus two is five. Now, it doesn't always work this way. If you have addition and subtraction, they're considered to be on the same level. So it works it from left to right. But if I had multiplication and division or something that had a higher priority, it would execute those first. Again, we'll talk about that in the next lesson. So let's just go ahead and clear this and run this real quick. And we do, in fact, hit five, right? Four plus three is seven. Seven minus two is five. All right, so let's move on now and talk about multiplication. And we can just use the numbers we already have. The multiplication operation is done with the asterisk. So I'm going to put one there. And you can put one here if you want to. You can multiply three numbers. That's not a big deal. So four times three is 12. 12 times two is 24. If I console.log that, you'll get 24. So that's pretty straightforward. Again, if you convert one of these into a string, you just need to be aware that if it's a string that can be converted into a number, it's going to do it for you. So you'll still get 24. The type of result will still be a number. But if you put something in there again that can't be converted into a number, you're going to get not a number. So you get not a number because it tried to take the string 4 times the number 3, not a number, and then not a number times this number 2, not a number. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this back to just the number four. And actually, I'm going to use some different numbers now because we're going to move into division. So I'm going to do 10, I'm going to do five, and I'm going to do two. So let's go ahead and put a division operation in here. So this is just a forward slash, nothing fancy. Typically what we'd use in typical text to show division. So we have number one divided by number two divided by number three. These are just going to be evaluated left to right. So number one divided by number two, 10 divided by five is two. And then two divided by, this is two, will give me one. And you can even take this out if you want to make it less complicated to kind of make things simpler for just right now. And we'll move on in a second. So we do get two, 10 divided by five is two. And then again, if you put that other one in there, that number three, you're going to get a result of one because you have two divided by two, which is one. Okay, so we do get one. So then let me also show you this with, if this guy was a string, again, if you're not working with addition, if you're doing multiplication, subtraction, or division, it's always gonna try to convert this into a number for you, okay? Because you can't do string concatenation with this division. So if I run this right now, I'm gonna get the exact same result because it is able to take the string 10 and convert it into a number. Again, if you put something in here like 10, like this, it can't do anything with that, so it's going to give you not a number as a result. So you just need to be aware of that when you're programming. Now, let's talk about this remainder operator. Okay, this is done with a percentage sign. And to do this, I'm going to change my numbers up a bit. I'm going to make this a 4. And let's go ahead and do number 1 divided by number 2. And let's just see what we get from that. So it's not going to be a whole number anymore. So we're going to get 2.5. So that's 10 divided by 4. And if you punch that up on a calculator, you'll verify that's what it is. But what happens if I change this, or I can actually do this on another one. I'm going to put const remainder is equal to number one. I'm going to use my percentage symbol and then number two. What this is going to do is it's going to figure out, well, four can go into 10 how many times? Well, it goes in two times. This is whole number amount. So what's going to be left over? Well, again, if four goes into 10 two times, if you think about two times four is eight. And the difference between 10 and 8 is 2. So the remainder is 2. So if I console.log my remainder here, I'm going to get 2. So let's go ahead and clear this and run this. And we get 2.5 from the first one, just the division, and then 2 as the remainder. So you might think, why in the world would you need that? But it does come up where you need to figure out if kind of one number you're given is divisible by another. And basically, if the result from remainder is 0, the number is divisible by the other. So if I change this to five, then I'm gonna get two here, which is a whole number, and the other one will just be zero because there won't be a remainder. So you get two and zero, okay? But if we put it back to this one, then of course, you're going to have a remainder. And let me clear that out so it's more easy to see. So you get 2.5 and then two. All right, so let's move on now and talk about our exponentiation operator. So let's say we do const number one, and I'm gonna choose something really small, so like three, and then const number two, and let's just say we use two, keep it easy. So then we can say const, you could do result, or you could say my power if you want, is equal to, I'm just gonna do number one, 
raised to the power of number two. So to do that, you do double asterisk, okay, number two. And what this is going to do is it's gonna take this number right here on the left side and raise it to this number right here on the right side. So basically this one, number one is the base and number two is the exponent. So you would have three squared or three to the second power. So console.log this my power variable, which will be not right? Three times three is nine, three to the second power is nine. So CLS and then run it and you do get nine. And you can change this up if you want to do something like three to the fifth power, which is three times three, which is nine times three again, which is 27 times three again, which is 81 times three one more time, which is 243. Let's go ahead and see that real quick, just as an example and you get 243. So that's pretty straightforward. And again, it works the same way. If I try to put a string in there or something like that, then it's going to do some type coercion for me and it's gonna give me the same result, okay? The other thing we talked about kind of in the last lesson was if you're using Booleans like true and false, it'll coerce true into a one, it'll coerce false into a zero. So we know that if you raise something to the power of zero, you get one. Okay, hopefully you remember that from math class. So let's say that this guy I just put as false. And so what you'd have here is three raised to the power of zero, which by definition is one. So let's clear this and run it and you do get one, okay? Now if I put true here, what am I gonna get? True gets coerced into a value of one, so three to the first power is just three. So if we clear this and run it, you get three. Okay, so that's all very straightforward. We didn't have this for the longest time. This is sort of a newer operator. We used to use something called math.pow, so I can show you that real quick. So this is built into JavaScript as well. So let's say my power two is equal to, we'll go math.pow, okay? And you can see it comes up as a shortcut in your editor. And basically you're gonna have a number here, we'll just call it a comma b. So a, the one on the left, is the base, and b, the one on the right, is the exponent. So we can just do the same thing number one and number two, okay? And let's just change this back to two, or we can actually make it three just to keep it kind of fresh. So we would have what? Three to the third power is 27. So if I console.log my power, and then also my power two, I'm just gonna get 27 and then 27 again on the same line. So let's go ahead and run this, and we get 27 and 27 again on the same line. So that's pretty much it for this one. Working with kind of math operators in JavaScript is really simple and straightforward. It's just as you would expect it to be.